They canceled that? Canceled. All right, folks, I had to start over. We had an announcement. Discussions in education. Vern Caruso, Tony Alberts, Jimmy Brown. Uh, trying out the sound stuff. Sorry, we were trying to... We were talking about something. Okay, are you talking about the... They were talking about spring so photos. So yearly, yearly, Jimmy and I, during spring spring, spring photos, we have, like, these silly posts. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Oh, I saw... Yeah, no, yeah, I've seen you, them. Yeah, you've seen them. Silly pictures. Silly you pictures, together. you know. Jen has them all on hers. Yeah, we got a little self-conscious, so we had to go, um, a little hard on one of them, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, okay, no smiling, no smiling. So we took a picture of no smiling, right? And I put it side by side, right? Mm-hmm. I edited it and put it side by side. And um, it looked, they looked like profile pictures of uh, a wanted double that committed something oh, yeah, huh? serious. <laughs> Have and you seen these men? <laughs> you know, yeah. these men? And it's kind of scary, though, mm-hmm. not knowing who we are, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And it's it's kind of scary. One sec. Sorry, guys. When I did this at school, we got all the school announcements. So that's like, what we're hiding out. Yeah, we're, we're trying. We're trying. We're in another room. Can't h- cover the speaker though. So that's just the way that goes. So we were talking about how you know, these are. Sometimes can be portrayed by, you know, a lot of times be portrayed by the media. Oh, shit. Not knowing who they are. Yeah, when you guys get at. gunned down someday, they're going to put that. That's the poster. Yeah, no, it looks, picture. it looks kind of intimidating, right? It looks a little like bit. something that they would post. I mean, you could, I can, you know, I, I'm a bit of an actor. I could put, you know, I could put a face on, you know what I mean? But it could be manipulated. Easily. That's the point, I think, is that that Easily. picture could be manipulated by the uh, Misinterpreted, misinterpreted, judged, okay. yeah, and you know, not knowing who these two people are with the number of graduate degrees that they carry, right. <laughs> could easily be seen as yeah, these we got, two. We got three masters in this room, don't we? You have four. Oh, do four. you have four? I don't have two masters. You no. have two. Oh, you have two, right? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I forgot. You're sorry, ad- dude. I- that's all I did. I tried to get away from the house, so I. I hey, I'm a simple guy. Things. But you I had your exercise. Why go with a simple guy? I'm a simple guy. I just have one master's. Last. But how many certifications do you have? Uh, we, we're talking a masters. A few. A few. You. <laughs> <laughs> you exactly. So what? what the conversation that Vern and I were having were about um, people of privilege and how they like to go outside of the country to Ooh. to support. Oh. You know, to to get that feel of I did my good gesture. Oh, you know? oh yeah, we, yeah, we were talking about that. a little bit about that about how you know I I build you know wow. houses in Mexico for the summer. I and think I, it's great know, that people do that, but you know what really is the purpose besides the whole altruistic, purpose, right? Right. I mean, I think people need to be honest with themselves. I mean, we do this work day in day out. Yeah, you know, I think the point is that we treat people regardless of who they are, daily, like this. You know, yeah. I mean, we're privileged to be in a position where we can help people out. Right, most definitely, and to be able to support people when it's coming from a, a organic place, coming from it's a, not like selective. A real, it's not selective. Right. I think that's the point is that we're we're observing people be more selective as to who that they that they help. Who they're gonna save? Yeah. You know, definitely there's a prestige in helping people that are refugees from, uh-huh. um, yes. you know, from most from other, countries, other countries. Yeah. Most. 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 Like, you're not going to get any prestige to rescue a single refugee, let's say, you know, Islamic male and bring him here. But he's got a family. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, if they're like an African refugee and then, you know, you know, she's got her whole family. If it's just a single woman, you're like, okay, whatever. But like, mm. But, you know, it just me, it, we were questioning. I mean, it's great that they're doing that. Really. Yeah. That's not even the point. The, bo- the bottom is people are getting support. That, in those exactly. That countries need that need it. But then there's another level that makes me look at the people who did the supporting or did the um, community service, we'll say. And it makes me wonder, like, what are they doing that for? Because if you're doing it to help, you can. You don't have to go all the way to Mexico or to to some Ghana or 
Cambodia, Exotic wherever country. else, some somewhere you can do, you can help in your own community. You know, yeah. you said and you, you can might close your a, eyes and just reach out, and you'll reach someone to help. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you close your eyes and t- reach out and touch somebody. You can and you can help that well, person. I think, I think was I talking with? I can't remember who, which one of you brought this up because I think you guys were talking about it with me the other day too. And uh, and I was mentioning I know well no but I was I was like you know and I mentioned like you know it, it, we we definitely have there's a difference between the person who does like the two weeks in Mexico building houses mm-hmm. versus the person who's like they move to Africa right that's, that's their different. new that's life different. that's they, really different they spent seven to ten years there doing stuff and the only reason they come back to America is to be like you guys need to give me more money so that right. I can go there and help this community that is out more. way different yeah well, that's legit that's but, way uh, different but you're right no I mean. I mean, I am thinking like you know the people are like oh you know during the Peace Corps go dig wells in Africa I'm like dude they need some wells in Flint uh-huh, and then, exactly uh, there's that's a couple other so communities I think that's our point around Detroit well, people are scared you know oh, yeah. people are scared yeah they don't they'd rather go all fly all the way across you don't need to go that the country long. and and be escorted into a certain area and help out for a month or two weeks and fly back here and have that story of it was just I saw kids who this and that. and that's great to see you know to travel and to see other countries and so we understand how great we do have it here and if that's your purpose and it, it brings you back here and you are inspired to do everything you can in your own community not only do you give when you go but you give when you come back that's a whole different level of putting yourself in a position to find empathy and to and to grow as an individual in a way that you can share your experiences as well as share, you know, whatever skills you have to help contribute to the society we live in here. Mm-hmm. But you see, but mm-hmm. but that is, I mean, that attitude, that that dichotomy, that that kind of the, I mean, there's a bunch of, there's definitely a ton of gray in here, but like that kind of two attitudes towards helping others. I mean, it exists in everything. I mean, you you've met those teachers. Anything who, and everything. Well, who come in and they're like, oh, like you know, and why aren't these kids doing? Like, I'm here. I'm giving my all. These kids aren't doing it. It's like, well, we you're giving the wrong that all. Today too, huh? Yeah, yeah just... you're not giving the right all. You're doing what you think is right. That's not necessarily what these kids need. And right. like, I mean, we've seen it there. We we've obviously seen a ton of it in policing. Or you yeah. get, you know, cops saying, like, oh, I'm just trying to help this community. Why won't these, you know, people let me just do my job and help keep them safe? And it's like, well, you're not doing the job you need. I mean, that's a consistent. Can I go on a sidebar real quick? Sidebar. So I was thinking, I was thinking, I don't know, maybe a couple of months ago, because I was driving, right? Mm-hmm. And I just had this reaction because I saw the police car. And I was like, oh, <laughs> the police, you know what I'm saying? Do you have cussing on this thing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. The police, right? <laughs> so I'm like, why does a grown-ass man who works in the school system, has a good job, own my own business, right? Um, Everything on the car is legit. I'm not doing anything wrong. Here's a black male, sees the police. First thing I think is, oh, shit. Like, I'm like, and that's my initial reaction. I got to talk myself out of that so it I, goes to, it speaks to what all this black lives matters and all this other stuff that's going on my initial reaction is to fear the police another obstacle there's another thing in my way that's coming after me that's this criminal justice system seeking me out that's but, going to take something from me but that's not a new feeling right? no that's not a that, new that's feeling been, that's been there since probably what like teenager when it really started becoming very apparent exactly but now i'm thinking now you think about it i'm thinking about it like in this because when i was young that was a real like i knew that they thought i was a threat like they they were afraid of me you know young black male they, they still are you know they were huge but you You're know not a tiny glasses black guy. now just, i'm a little older you know i don't have that are oh yeah they still have that skin. you put that but, hoodie on yeah i think everyone deal. has a little bit of elevated kind of uh, awareness of being around at least for me, right? Okay. I'm aware, well, but not to a point where it's a matter of life and death. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I get, whoa, you know, I, oh, you know, I start thinking of what and what am I doing wrong, but not to a point where, you know, well, this is 
See, I might not yeah, live through this. I, well, I would say, for me, I'm always worried about being deported. And, I, like, I, I hate to say that. But, no, like, I mean, you see me. Like, I don't, I'm, you know, I look Mexican or Filipino or whatever that person decides. And, like, when they're doing a sweep, like, there's that part of me that's like, they're going to put my ass, like, it'll be the day I don't have my ID, put my ass on a damn bus, and they're going to send me to Mexico, and I'm gonna be like, I'll speak Spanish. And they'll be like, clever. And they just send me down there, and I'm going to be like, this isn't who I am. And I'm really worried about, like, that's, that is something that I, I worry about. Like, I don't, I, I do not worry about, like, getting shot, at least, I don't think. You? I think I, I, I do worry about getting roughed up, but not, not shot. I've been roughed up. I'm, I'm worried shot. about being judged, <laughs> but not necessarily for my safety, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, but we were talking about that earlier. Going back to, I mean, I think this all is connected with what you, you said earlier in that, you know, some teachers don't have the capacity to be, to, to, to have empathy for their for their students, right? Yeah. We were talking about it earlier, right? Mm-hmm. Not knowing, and we have to be reminded as well. There's a, a, a there's a there's a situation today where we listened to a parent, and basically what happened was, you know, people are already in this community are already, you know, walking on the edge, and that they are barely surviving with what they have. So any one thing that Indeed. that's not that's not positive. Will snowball, you uh-huh. know. Get you going down that hill quick. Get that quick. push you, and then you're you're rolling, and then there's it starts to snowball. So, for example, you know this mom, you know she was just having a Slurpee in Seven Eleven, and you know she had her kids, and you know this 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 young lady was having a uh, an argument. Suppose it, or she had a beef with with her child, and and wanting to fight the child. Right? So what parent would not try to defend your own kid from a threat? Mm-hmm. So she defended and she, you know, the, 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 the her, her sons. And, and, and now, you know, because that girl was a minor, she was arrested for several hours. That pretty much was the, 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 the first button that, that started this roller coaster of, of, what do you call it? Consequences. Consequences. Yeah. That they couldn't, that, that's difficult for them, that sets them back. And it's yeah. difficult for them to, so for example, with that, so I have to get bail money. They're going to hold my car for 30 days. My daughter is panicked. My son is strapped. My son is stressed. I need to get to work. I have to take Uber to get to work because I don't have any other means of transportation. That's a cost. That's a new cost. I'm going to get fired by my job because I don't have transportation because of this one incident. Okay. She gets fired from that. That's a misunderstanding. That's a, which is a misunderstanding. Right. So she's, you know, now she's defending for her freedom and that she needs to have money for her own lawyers. Right. It's already Where's bad. Where's that money going to come Where's from? Where's that mo- you don't rent have money? Rent money. Rent money. You don't have money to get a, oh, a car. Right. To you don't get to work. You don't have the resources. Like Money friend, to get family, or anyone else that you know of that have that hey, kind of. But this goes back to, I mean, you so know, people need to understand. Yeah, it. no, I, yeah, I agree. But I mean, at the same time, like we've made being poor illegal again. Like back in the day, you know, I taught kids. I'm teaching kids U.S. history. Like they sent poor people here to do work and made them work off their debts, and that's what we're getting. We're we, we're back to that point in this world. At least in the United States, and it becomes generational, man. Because oh, they, because so because you can't work out of that debt you if you're trying to help out. mom pay off her debt. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm sorry, but like, yeah, we blame these kids for not being able to do their work and concentrate, and 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 being defiant and being. I mean, they're, that's just the issues right here. What about their the the, the emotional and mental challenges that they need to that we need to address as well. And that's, I think that's why I'm employed <laughs> in this district. Job security for us. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. But it's not trickling down into the classroom unless teachers like you are, are pursuing it. Yeah, oh, I know. And sometimes you know we all need, you know, to tell me they got to gotta, they gotta be kind of, they got to look. You can't, they just can't be blinded and close their eyes. Oh, no. And be ignorant to the fact of what's going on outside of the classroom. 
some teachers say you come into the classroom, this is what's going to happen in here. And whatever was outside, you don't bring that in here. <laughs> you hear that all uh, day. I know, I know, no. I know, I know. And, you know, and I, I admit, that's like, the first year. My, there was definitely, I've had those years of teaching where I'm like, you know, hey, this is your escape. Ignore the stuff out there and come in. But that's hard. Like, you know, and, and so, I mean, I, my policy has always been with kids. And they still have a hard time, like, I mean, they're working on learning how to articulate themselves. But it's, you know, so telling them, if you're having a bad day, come directly to me and let me know. I don't want to be the guy who's sitting there harassing you because you're not doing work. And then you're like, you know, oh, there's stuff going on at home. Like, I don't want to ask you to the point that you're crying, frustrated, or you do something stupid. We want to when you can come, yeah. you come up to me at the beginning of class and you say, Mr. Alberts, something's going on at home. I have a really hard time today. Okay, that's fine. Why don't you sit over here, you know, sit away from people, or you can sit at your desk, that's fine. I do need you to do some work, but you don't have to be on all the time. Like, here's the minimum of what I need you to do. Just because you're here, and it will help kind of like calm down if you're not thinking about it the whole period and the kids are like all right like i can do that and most of the time they do fine right but i agree like a lot of teachers don't have that policy a lot of teachers are like why aren't you i think the question is how is it that we allow teachers to understand and and and, and have empathy and compassion for these students there are a lot of teachers that have that though they have that but they are kind of i think misguided or they where they're coming from. I think they lose from. that some at some point they lose that. They become jaded and they lose that. Well, so because they start all coming from a good place. Classroom. But it's like I oh, so I mean if you think about it, I mean teachers build more relationships in their lifetime than probably anyone else out there. Right. Like bar none. Yep. And just like in any relationship, you get people who are cool, the people who are indifferent, and the people who take advantage. And for teachers, you're getting that constant year after year of those kids. Like, even if it's just one or two a year who are, like, the kids who take advantage. Like, in a personal relationship in my life, if I get somebody who takes advantage of me all the time, I'd be like, screw you, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, when they're in the classroom and they're taking advantage of you, then you start getting bitter. Then mm -hmm. you start building that wall. And, I mean, that's where I can I understand where there's... I need to deliver to my point. lesson. And they, they remember that feeling. That feeling of, like, I trusted somebody before, they betrayed me. And then another year, I, you know, so there's that repetitive, like, they're trying to learn from their mistakes, but unfortunately, then that affects the kids who would benefit from their original selves. Right. So it's just, I mean, it's hard. Yeah, that's a tough spot, because as a clinician, the same thing happens. Oh, yeah. They come in here, they try to work me, you know, and they, and they, they just, they tell you what you want to hear, they leave here, and then they, they go keep doing, making the same mistakes, and they... Try to see if I'm going to fall for the BS story every time. Like, oh, this is happening. Real instances of tragedies in their families. But, they'll, you know, they're milking it. Not so much talking and trying to process through what happened. But they're using that as an excuse to do yeah, this, that, and the thing. other. And, work, and, and, and not really working the process of going through, you know, the emotions. Yeah, they're sitting in the victim mentality, not mm -hmm. working through to a survivor. Of right, like, and, and working and, through and their challenges. Yeah. yeah, so that that happens in here, but I, I, just, I cannot allow myself, I, I gotta, you know, you gotta restart, you gotta start fresh, you know, and, and you gotta give them a new opportunity. And I Everybody think as a school them. system, we need to have that ability for our teachers to be reminded of, of where they were. Well, honestly, like, I think an effective school would have a counselor for teachers. You would have a teacher coach, and you would have a teacher counselor, and they would sit, and it would be confidential. And just how many would really participate in that? There's a lot of ego too, man. There's a lot of ego. I'm just saying. I'm not saying they wouldn't 100, percent but if it became the norm, I think that that sounds like a good idea to you know to work with burnout well, to I help think, them avoid you know a lot of self care. Think, well, realistically, who you start with are the new teachers, and they're the ones who would take advantage of it. Right. Right. Because they uh, trust good ideas. Isn't first that years, what the 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 bitsa is is is? They're not counselors. Shit. They're but, teachers. But in a way, it's it's an outlet. So for us here, we deal with a lot of traumatic cases. Mm -hmm. I, I think we we talk through it out. It's not a it's not a counseling session, 
But we know that there's someone there that can empathize. But, I mean, like, I mean, the three of us, like, yeah, I mean, we have each other to talk to. You're an actual counselor. Right. And I would say that you and I are educated enough in that, and we're confident enough in who we are that we know how to approach many situations, not nearly as many as you. Like, you know how to handle it and help people grow. That's part of our jobs, but I'm just saying, like, a coach is not a counselor. Like, that's not a, a coach's job is, I mean, their jobs are similar. Like, you know, they're expected to help you with personal growth, but... No, no like, not a professional. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, exactly. Whereas, like, a counselor is focused on, like, personal growth. And they, they, t- they tie in and intertwine. But that's what I'm saying. It would, be, it would be nice if the school system did that for teachers, especially new teachers. And then those new teachers getting in that habit of, like, well, like once a month I sit down with my counselor. The hard thing about that, I hear you. I don't mean to interrupt you. But a lot of the times... The issue isn't the new teachers. It's the old teachers. No, I agree. But those new teachers become those old teachers. Right. So you say, but see, that's what I'm saying. They'll do it at the beginning part of their career because that's what they need, need to do. Now that they're seasoned, they think they have this rhythm and this routine. And they don't want to go back and do what the young teachers are doing now because, oh, I did that well, no, but back it- when I was in training still. Now I know what I'm doing. Why would I go get this new teacher service? But see, but that's what I'm saying. So new teachers, like, okay, so if you see what I'm saying, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I understand what you're saying, but if you were to roll this out, like, let's let's say okay. we got the funds to roll because this I'm, out. Because I'm district. just a little bit pushing against the idea, just a taste, so you can flush it out. Go no, ahead. no, no. So I mean, if you rolled it out with new teachers, it would have been just like the rollout of No Child Left Behind, or not No Child Left of the Common Core standards when they rolled those out. So when they rolled those out, the intelligent districts, what they did is they started with. K, first and second. They started the standards in those grades. The next year, they started the standards in, like, the next grade levels up. And those kids that had it, they all got it again. And then they, you know, they started moving into the system. They didn't start it with the old kids. They let those kids out of the system as they slowly rolled this up grade level by grade level each year. That makes sense. So that you do it. So what I'm saying is, like, if you brought a counselor, if you said, okay, you know, first and second year teachers this year... Once a month, you have to meet with a counselor. The question is, how do you normalize that? And I think that's oh, and that's and that's how you normalize it is you just say like this is now part of your job. Once a month, you'll meet with a counselor to talk about like what's what's hard, what's going on, and by the time they're like fifth or sixth year teachers, and you like, keep it going. Yeah, you just keep it going, and and like by the time they're fifth, sixth year teachers, it becomes a, a and if you like, need more yeah. sessions. You can get more sessions. Yeah, you request but more. But you're required once a month. Once but you know what, you the sit. difficult thing with that is that, as you know, the new teachers are influenced by veteran teachers as well, as they should, both negative and positive, mm-hmm. right? They're not like siloed or they're not like kids where, you know, we have control of that. They'll, they will right. be they're communicating gonna with gonna be some other teachers issues. and, well, I mean, and I think with union issues, issues and... All that other stuff, and when is it going to happen? Is it happen during their prep, and they need that well, time? I think the influence of veteran the... teachers both are they positive. getting paid during that therapy yeah. session? I think the influence of I think the influence of veteran teachers both positive and negative. It's it's uh, it, it, it it's going to happen, you know, mm-hmm. regardless. Yeah. Yeah, and honestly, most of the time, like, those those are good questions. Those are questions that the veteran teachers would bring up, and, like, how is this going to work in the long run? How is this going to apply? Like, I mean, those are good questions that would need to be answered. And I think what I think what you would get is, I'm sure you would get some mockery from older veteran teachers, but I also know plenty of teachers, like, would probably think, I wish I had something like that when I was starting out. Right. And then you might even get those who are like, I participate now. And that should definitely be an optional thing of like, hey, listen, you guys are, you know, you're in this, you're in the umbrella of the older teacher contract. I'm not going to force you to do that. But if you want to take advantage of these services, they're there for you. But you need to sign up. You need to commit to doing it for a year or, you know, so that if we hire somebody, we're not just wasting money. Right. I'm pay for that, though. No, Where would I that mean, money come from? The, the public but the district, the district might say, okay, we're paying for medical insurance, so go see your own therapist through your medical well, insurance. Well, but if you think about it, I mean, I think you justify it in that it will ultimately, it's preventative. Yeah, medicine, it, keep, it right? helps you keep teachers yeah. fresh, right? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, how do you work see, through? Now, if you not, look through the district, like if you said, like, I mean, because uh, Oak Grove does 100% on Kaiser. Mm-hmm. So if they that, that sounds to me like something Oak Grove works out with Kaiser and says, like, we want we want to set this up. Kaiser doesn't have the staffing for that. 
Well, not yet. But well, if the no, district there says... There might be a market for it, though. That's the thing. Yeah, if the yeah. district says, this is what we want, and, you know, that's what, helping us determine who we're going with with our health care plan, mm-hmm. then Kaiser will probably suddenly have those services because... Right. But the fact that how many... How many people do you have as counterparts in other school districts that you know of? There's none that I know of. No. We don't even have that. We don't. We I didn't say this say is likely to happen. I'm saying it would just be a good be nice. thing. Because, think, because then when teachers start getting treated like that regularly, then they feel like that's something they should give to their kids regularly. I, I think if the conversation. That's, that makes sense. I think that if makes we sense. normalize the conversation of school is just not for academics and curriculum and we have to be honest with it that we and that's part of educating a child right is to try to social address everything else social before. emotional we intelligence need to, as well that needs to be a normalized thing and that you know district should be invested but now i'm gonna put you on the spot please do because if that's the truth then why do we got six months of or six weeks of testing at the end of the year well, that's the thing. Well, and that's the right? thing. That's why it needs to be normalized. So we can prevent those situations from happening. Because yeah. right now, currently, everywhere else, school's function is to educate a child based on the standards that they approve. Yeah. We all know, being in this field long enough, that there's more to it than that. Yeah. In order for us to even do that, we have to address A and B before we can address the C. And there's not enough resources to address those A and Bs. That's that's to be normalized, right? Right. I mean, there's no one else that I know who has your position in any other school district. Uh, I didn't I don't know. We didn't I haven't had a counselor in any of my No, not normally. No, not, not not, no never, unless it's an outside <laughs> yeah. source. Not uh, unless I had to call CPS and then I had to exactly. talk to Exactly, unless it's an on. outside, you know, source, uh-huh. you know, not hired by the district. Yeah. No, I mean, like I said, like, realistically, is something like this going to happen anytime soon? No. But if I'm dreaming of high in the sky, the world, I know. I mean, I mean, and that's the problem is like, and that's, I mean, honestly, you probably, if you had something like that, you would probably reduce teacher matriculation i think it will because, follow like think of how many teachers burn out in those five years i mean that's why they call it the five year burnout i mean the it's it's an it's known occurrence everybody talks about it they're like how do we teach teach teacher? well you know bits is not doing it no not at all you know and the school sites aren't doing it so i mean you need to really rethink oh there you go it's all good <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, right. no right. We can take you too. Take you. All right, Ramon. But uh, but yeah, no. I mean, it's just it's one of those things where you're just we're gonna not address that. Oh, sorry, that was a custodian came through. Sorry. I have to hook hook my trash up, you know, and took care of the trash. We appreciate that. We gotta address that. There was all this fumbling around. Yeah, you know, sorry. Fumbling around. Like, what is that? All right, all right Ramon. Have a good weekend. All right. <laughs> He's just gonna keep going. I want to finish my thought, and then be like, "Okay, no, no, no." But I I mean, you guys understand what I'm saying. It's one of those. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea. You know, I'm for any therapy for everybody. I'm 100 percent for that. But even before that, we have to normalize that therapy is okay because people are still. That's a whole nother level. That's society. Society, like you're broken if you go see a therapist. Exactly. Rather than I see a therapist. It's to a weak mind myself from breaking down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I or I go to a therapist to be the best version of me that I can be. To uh, for accountability reasons, I go to see a therapist to keep myself accountable for my behaviors, and I can look at what I do and celebrate the successes I have, and I can look at what I do. But if- and all look at what I think need to that change. Way, we wouldn't have any problems if all people are reflective. Oh, there's always and problems. Honest. No, you there's there's always problems. problems. I mean, he's, he put it. I mean, you're still going to get those people who reflect, but really are just like attempting to take advantage of their victimhood and use that as an excuse for their actions to make other people victims. So, I mean, like, you're still going to have that aspect of it. But, like, I mean, even if. And the human mean, flaw, too. Yeah. It's the human flaw. It's human. Like, whatever. I'm just a simple guy. Yeah. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> Here we go. 
I don't know. Like, I, I slip my shoes on just like every. I don't have I don't shoelaces. The <laughs> shoes. You know. Hey man. Oh man. Can, I went to private school. I, can on you my... imagine? I mean, just like imagine this idea. Like I'm, I'm now. I'm just like I'm like thinking about like ideal school. Like imagine if you had it. Like like not only for the teachers but for the students. Once a month, they had to meet with the counselor. Ooh, Ooh that'd be interesting. I like that. Where it was just like a one on one. Because then you're impacting. Now, when they were younger, that's part they've the had that experience. And then they know. So as when they're like adults, that. yeah, they expect that. Like I miss the having like that. that. Yeah, that's yeah. but not only that, but they learn. I mean, there's so many things on a one-on-one yeah. discussion with mm-hmm. a, an actual like trained therapist, where it's like, hey, this is like you can address some of those issues yeah. you're going through yeah, right now. Like that. And that then by the time they get, I mean, it's got to be a specialized school. Though. That is interesting. I like that. Right. I like where your head's at on that. I, I mean, I agree. I mean, it's one of the things you said, like making mental health like a standard society. The best way to do that is to start with kids. Right. Because so, if a kid, yeah. You, it's it's important. Like as a teacher, you have your way and you carry yourself. Like me, I'm a father. I'm a coach. Simple guy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I have my private Athlete. practice. I do martial arts. I do flag football. I, you know, um, we podcast. Yeah. What else? I'm a you know diehard Raider fan. Go to my games. You got your Raider podcast. You got your. I got a Raider podcast. So you you do a bunch of different things to keep you. Like I don't put all my eggs in one basket. Yeah. You know what I mean. I keep myself fresh doing a lot of different things because I enjoy a lot of different things. We watch fights, right? We watch yeah. MMA fights. Oh, man, I was just telling him the other day. You guys got to start calling me when you go to these, man. I'm getting tired of seeing your posts of like, oh, oh we went to another fight. I'm like, those I motherfuckers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> next time, next time. Next time. Burn, I don't know. I thought, next you know, time. you guys were on the outs. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it. <laughs> You're in the, you, you can tell me I'm the over-inviter, man. So, oh, you know, that's fine. Albert was there hey, back in the like Hooters days. Yeah, I day. was like, He was back, back in the Hooters days. True, right? That was how long ago. was there back in the Hooters days. Oh, that was so well, long you guys ago. were both working in another uh-huh. business. Yeah, I know, man. Oh, ooh, ooh, yeah. Gosh. We were just occasional bros. Yeah. Occasional. Yeah. The Hooter days. You remember the Hooter yeah, days? Yeah, I remember the Hooter days. Watching the fights. And being like... Before UFC 100, even. Yeah. As kids. And then now we come together and we're working to collectively. Isn't that crazy? At a, in a district. Crazy, That's interesting. Huh? Yeah. This could easily be Hooters. <laughs> Please don't. Not that. No, 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 no. I mean, bad no, reference. No, no, you know what? Buffalo Wild. Buffalo Wild. I do kind of feel like that. Where I'm like, I'm just an old dude. Just go away. Leave me my my wings. I'm watching the fight. Dude, yeah. Leave me be. <laughs> but that's the thing. What I'm trying to say is, a lot. And I go to therapy my on uh, uh, every couple of weeks. You mm-hmm. know, to see my therapist. That's the thing about it. I keep myself fresh and I keep myself doing a lot of the things that I'm interested. I have so many things that interest me that I pursue, that I continue to do hobbies, you know, um, activities. I think we all have that create. We all have that. This this mental health that is you know more solid. I would like to say I feel solid in my because you're a different person in every one of those. Exactly. I mean, that's what I would love. Pursue. I mean, that would be a fun. To do with the kids, find their interest. By the way, we're looking into um, hunting, bro. Maybe uh, you're thinking about hunting, we're dude. Talking. I was we're, thinking about ah, it myself. There we go. We're damn you, Joe Rogan. I just need to point out, damn you, Joe Rogan. Yeah. But like, right. I think he, I feel like he has a really good point. I thought about yeah. it. I eat meat. I'm like, and it's not like we're I'm for to home and get oh, an yeah. home ranch. Get an get home ranch. We we'll get an outfit to take us. Uh-huh. Maybe spend a couple of hundred dollars on that outfit, whatever, and then we'll just snipe a pig. You think so? Man, yeah. I know shotgun, come on. shotgun, or shotgun, bro. What no, are you gonna shotgun use? Was like too much. Give me a rifle, rifle man. Yeah. Come on. You have, you're gonna buy your own rifle? No, no, no. no you rent outfit. it as part it's of the outfit. outfit. So the outfit, you. I it's think like a safari tour, man, but a cheap oh, man's rifle, version. Bro. Go get your own rifle. I want my own rifle. That's you're gonna have to get a bigger vault then for that. Yeah. Just get a small vault. Yeah. I need a vault. I can't have a rifle to you know. But I'm just saying, you know, it's like a it's like a cheap man safari hunting trip. Right. About we're, over the weekend. We're way sidebar. How about it, though? No, real quick. Speaking of bro, <laughs> we're kind of far away from it. I'd be totally down. I got some the, time in July. Let's let's. let's so you let's guys want to? You want to go research. hunting? Like overnight weekend? When? Let's so, July. July. Whatever. Yeah, let's do it. I'm it's down. a weekend. You want to okay. go hunting? I'm I'll down. Let's research. Okay. 
Okay, I'm so down. Let's, I'll, research let's, I'll research it. Yep. Let's see what we can get. My cousin we'll, goes we'll get a boar. My cousin hunts bear. Everything. He's got bear meat in his refrigerator. My black Venison, people don't everything. hunt, dude. He's, he's Mexican, my oh, Mexican. God. <laughs> That's clever. So I'm kind of accurate. You know what I mean? He, it's a Mexican it's, guy. Hey, he's Mexican though. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. It's still a little bit, right? Because Mexican. Mexican American. Yeah, he's Mexican. He's not Mexican yeah. national. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you actually, he the, goes with my uncle who from Mexico. Uh, see. My uncle. No, yeah, my name is too. Real deal Mexican. Yeah. I'm he's the one him had to hunt. My neighbor hunts stag. I was like, oh, dude, next time, if you want to give me some meat, I'm down. Like, he's like, all right. Uh, that meat's good, bro. Bro, bro, let's go hunting. Right? Let's go meet. My lady's family's all hunting. Really? All that. All I can understand. That's you know what I'm saying. I, I mean, like, my thing is, I, I want to do it out. once, at least once, because, like, I feel that that is something I owe to understanding how the process goes. Like, I've had fish. I've, I've, I've done fishing before. I've done it a bunch of times It'd be before. fun just to camp with you guys, too, man. Oh, that'd be, that'd be true. I'll share hunt. my meat. I'll share my meat. Oh, yeah. I'll, yeah. For record, I will share whatever it is that I snipe. Okay. Equally. I like the way you yeah. repeat that and sit and say, I'll share my meat with you guys. <laughs> More than you say, you I'll go, go share. You want to go camp with I kill? Too. And share your share your meat with us. I don't want to be awkward. We're not sharing meat in a camping trip. My <laughs> I will. Not yes, I will share whatever I kill yes. with you guys. Yeah, definitely. It'd be fun. Yes, let's do that. I know yeah. my ass will probably miss my shot anyway, so it's good that you guys are willing to share. <laughs> Just stay behind, Albert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know I'm not going to shoot nobody in the foot. This is not craziness. But, uh, no, I mean, well, like, what do you got? So, I mean, so like, you've got fun. all those to keep your kind of mental health going. Yes, yes. I've got, let's see, what have I got? I've, I mean, definitely podcasts are part of it. Like, right. Just chilling and listen. I got my rock climbing. I do yoga. Nice. I do. Uh, How's that yoga? I like that. I kind of want to get into that. Yo, so, yo, they, so I, I signed up at the studio. I, kind of yin, I like the yin. I like the yin yeah. yoga. Well, so I, I signed up at the, the yoga studio, or not the not balance? yoga studio. Uh, so I did balance, and that was fun. Okay. That was hard, though. Like, I yeah. mean, that was hardcore. When I got my climbing membership, they do, like, every Saturday, they do just, like, a, a climbing, yoga stretching. Climbing, where well, he climbs Vinyasa. is that place, bro. Yeah, the studio. It's pretty chill. It's downtown. Oh, the one right yeah. there downtown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah, the old yeah, club, where the old glow is. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, I, I love it. Like, so, I mean, it's cool. So, I can go climbing. So, I go climbing Tuesday, Thursday, and I climb Saturday morning before yoga. And then I go into yoga and I stretch for, like, you know, an hour and 15, 20 minutes. And then I'm, I'm good. And I'm like, all right. So, I start feeling limber. I mean, that's what I'm getting. I was getting old and creepy a bit. Yeah, so I, I need to yoga down right now. Yoga? Yeah. But then I got games I'm, and computers I'm the, I'm and, like, just playing with my boy. And, like, those are all, like, my best so like boy. That's all I want to do, like, times two. You know, yeah. That's all I want to do is just spend it with the kids. I enjoy hanging out with the kids, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you know, I think you need I'm, your time. The fights are good though. The fights yeah. are really good. Fights for us. are good. Just to Sorry, be Albert, with the guys. I, I know, I know. Just Sorry, you've been on the guys. house with that, but the fights next have one, been really one, good. One. Yeah, or just a lot, a lot of alone. You, know, you do I alone need, time. I do a lot of alone. You need that. I need that. You do. I, need that. I mean, when I go climbing, I go with my headphones on, mm-hmm. and that's kind of my alone time where I'm like, oh, this is my challenge for me. You need to grab that? Yeah, I do need to grab this. All right. You I'll let you I'll step, step out. out. It's all good. Yeah, because we're surrounded with people all day, including our families, right? So we need, yep. I mean, we do find time for ourselves, right? So, you know, cycling, you know, even just, just working around the house by myself. Yeah. I would even want to go to a silent retreat. Mm. That would be I mean, crazy. I've heard good things about that. I've known a couple of people went to them, and like not religious though. Man. No, religious, no, no, no. I can't do the religious part, but like definitely just that idea of like silent contemplation. You know what I want to yeah, do like over that. in? Um, I like that. I want to do float tank. I want to try float tank. Yeah, and um, and um, Scotts Valley. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. But I think you have to do that several times to get the to get the gains because the first one you're just trying get used to, to it. Get used to it for an hour. Right? But I can. I can Chill and zone out pretty quick. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I'd, try, I'd love to try it. Damn Joe. Maybe we, Damn we, Joe. We, I, I don't know, man. I'm taking all our money. I'm taking all our money. I'm but, not getting no massage like you, though, bro. No, I, I haven't gotten any massages. And... Sorry, I haven't. 
there's been some shady ass massages that I'm like, mm, this is a, a line that I'm not comfortable crossing, and like I'm like, okay, so I'm kind of done with massages in the San Jose area because I'm not rich, so I'm trying to go to like cheaper places. I'm like, okay, but they're sketchy. I'm like, okay, I'm done with this place. There's a lot of sketchy places out there, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, no, can't be doing that. But uh, I mean, I, like I said, like ideal. God, so many ideals in education. Cutting those stands in half, making like mental health a regular part of their practice. Nutrition, I would like to. We actually don't ever have talk nutrition. about that in any of, like, for example, a five-year plan, right? If yeah. we're gonna do, if we're gonna commit ourselves in educating a child, and we always talk about educating a child as a whole, right? It's almost kind of like you know, it's a given. But no one, the, the people really have a plan to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's they easy don't. enough to say, um, but but you have to have a, a specific plan in order to deliver that, and that needs to come from any district's five year plan. I think. I agree. I mean, I mean so, um, something I was talking about on the last podcast uh, when I went to that PD, uh, the guy Chris Emden, Doctor Doctor Chris Emden, uh, he was talking about like that idea of false equity. Of like, if we're doing this to address equity, we're address you know we're gonna address technology, we're gonna address like teacher training, blah blah blah. But none of it really gets down to like the equity that kids need in order to achieve. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's kind of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm just thinking just how we can deliver that empathy to them. So, for example, I was thinking of possibly, you know, support staff. You know, people wonder what we talk about them. There's a lot of intense conversations there, and that we pull all of these experts and just looking at resources and knowing that's that child and how can we better support that child so we're talking actually in you know one of the the, the meetings in that we do a, a fishbowl at first you know it's a case study mm-hmm. without any names and then you guys can observe us how it is that we talk about these um cases and then we'll do a case you know we'll give each team a study to try to to solve as well you know it, and it's something that's that's like real that. life you know yeah, and then that we can have one of the support staff member that can be in any of those teams because we know exactly what happened and it's almost like a flight simulator yeah right where we're gonna throw in well no you know there's the the father is in mexico and is not coming back until three months from now <laughs> you know what i'm saying so what are yeah. you gonna do then well no uh, you know, uh, the social studies, that period is, you know, completely impacted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think we should do a lot more of those in that, you know, it's almost, it's, you know, pilots do flight simulators. Yeah. We should have, you know, simulated how it is that we talk about these students. Yeah. That something like that is very specific that, you know, can address, can help address that. But yeah. we don't have enough of those times. No. Or, or at least it's not even in the radio. You're talking about the mock situations? Yeah, like like we're it. talking yeah, about. I like that idea. You know? I just, I, what, no, I got no, I got no reservations. If I can be devil's advocate, though, to kind of push against you guys, mm. feel free. there might be some people, some individuals, mm. who feel like that since they're getting some information, that they need all information. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, teachers who want to teach but they want to know as much as a therapist does or as much as you guys do about the history and stuff that's going on with uh with with the kids and they may think they do a good job of keeping confidentiality but it's a liability for us you know for everyone to know and it's not it's confidential you know, yeah, for a reason I mean, everyone is so, in the need so to that's know what basis. gets me that's what makes me a little nervous because i do hear some of the lunchroom discussions yeah and, and a lot of it, at the same very time, opinionated. they're misinformed. Though. Yes, they got bad information, bad and then they're just their opinions misinformed. Their education on what subject that they're talking about is just very minimal. So that's what makes me a little bit nervous. But at the same time, there are some people with some valuable years of experience that have dealt with a lot of situations that contribute. I think the point is for them contribute. to just reflect on, on, on the student and, and, and the student's background. Not necessarily solving the issue. You know, but understanding, but understanding the lens that, of the student. Exactly. That there's a lot but, more than that behavior. I mean, but, a symptom. But I think you're also pointing out something that is lacking 
teach your training program. Yep, that's which it, is, man. Which I is agree. that idea. I mean, because I mean, we joke about it all the time as educators. At least I, I know me and my teacher friends joke about how the fact that, you know, oh, you know, we're just teacher, counselor, parent, mm-hmm. you know, friend, confidant. You know, we're supposed to be all these roles. We're not, uh, most people aren't trained in that. Exactly. Right. right. Like, you know, like my wife happens to have a background where she did, she got her undergrad in psychology. So she has. Not clinical experience, but some like I'm understanding. theoretical understanding of uh-huh. how it should go. I'm not an idiot, so I was able to like. Well, I can't say idiot, but I'm empathic, and I've been to enough therapists in my own life where I have an idea of how therapists approach situations. Not a hundred percent. I will never claim that I'm an expert. So, like for me, I understand what you're saying. Like I would be teachers, like I kind of need more info here because I'm working with half the info. I've got this bad opinion, and I know it's not complete. What's mm-hmm. the other part of the story? So I, I understand where you're worried about mm-hmm. that. Like, mm-hmm. there would definitely be that. And I know you would be hard-pressed to be like, I can't really tell you because, like, it's a confidentiality right. thing. But, I mean, it is a question of, like, should teacher training programs, just like, I mean, just like police officers now. We expect police officers to be on the ground counters at point of contact, and they're not. Yeah, they're 5150 evaluators. That makes me nervous. When right? I found no. that out, when I found that out, I was That's working insane. at EMQ, and that I went through the fifty-one fifty you, training. You, you explain what a fifty-one fifty. Fifty-one fifty means um, you're a danger to yourself or to others, and that's when uh, the police or the fifty-one fifty evaluator decide whether you get held for seventy-two hours for mental, you know, for. <laughs> For having some mental health issues, if you're a danger to yourself, or you, they hold you for 72 hours to make sure that to evaluate you to make sure that you're okay to be in society. So if you get you, anyone can get that. So if you're acting up and the 5150 evaluator says you're going to the hospital, then you're going to be locked up for 72 hours. And, the and, that's, and they way, can use that as yeah. a way as a punishment. Which yeah. is well, the same way administrators should not be investigators. Yeah. You know, our job is to report. We do. We should not be investigators. You know, but at the same time, if that's going to be expected, that should be part of our training. That should be part of pay. I mean, that's why we really need to rethink this situation. I have to go. Everybody's got to go now. I think we're about to head out. So thank you for listening. I know we're kind of in the middle. Closure. I know. I know. We can always. I don't know. Maybe we can do this again next week if you guys are around. But I'll be around. I think. All right. We'll we'll, we'll finish it up for stars on the All right. right, Peace out, everybody.